Well, hello everyone. Here, in this video, we'll be learning about the cardiovascular system, or simply put, the circulatory system in our bodies. The cardiovascular system comes under one out of six broad life processes. Organization, metabolism, movements, responsiveness, growth, and reproduction. The term cardiovascular refers to the heart, cardio, and blood vessel, vascular. Hence, the circulatory system can be defined as the link between the heart and a network of blood vessels that transport and transfuse blood, nutrients, and oxygen throughout the body. The system consists of a muscular and chambered heart, capillaries, arteries, and veins. Let's start with the blood. A special connective tissue consisting of a fluid matrix, plasma, and formed elements erythrocytes, leukocytes, and platelets. Plasma is a viscous fluid that constitutes nearly 55% of blood. Water constitutes 90-92% to 92 of plasma in proteins, make up 6-8. to 8. Formed elements constitute 45% of blood. Erythrocytes, or red blood cells, RBCs, are the most abundant of all the cells in blood. A healthy adult man has, on average, 5 million RBCs per cubic millimeter of blood. They are formed in the bone marrow and have a red-colored, iron-containing protein called hemoglobin. Leukocytes, or white blood cells, WBCs, are colorless due to lack of hemoglobin. They include phagocytic cells that destroy foreign organisms entering the body. Platelets also called thrombocytes, are cell fragments produced in the bone marrow. Platelets cluster together at the site of a wound to act as a plug and help in healing. The heart is a mesodermally derived organ, i.e. it originates from embryonic mesodermal germ layer cells. The mesoderm is the source of bone, muscle, connective tissue and dermis. It is situated in the thoracic cavity. In between the two lungs, slightly tilted to the left, the size of a clenched fist. No bigger, but absolutely vital. The heart is protected by a double-walled membranous bag, called the pericardium. Your pericardium also covers the roots of your major blood vessels as they extend from your heart. The human heart, among other bird and mammal hearts, has four chambers two relatively smaller upper chambers, called atria, and two larger lower chambers, called ventricles. A thin muscular wall, called the interatrial septum, separates the right and left atria, whereas the right and left ventricles are separated by a thick walled interventricular septum. These septa prevent oxygen-rich blood from mixing with the blood-containing carbon dioxide. The atrium and ventricle of the same side are also separated by a thick, fibrous tissue called the atria ventricular septum. However, each of these septa are provided with an opening through which the two chambers on each side are connected. The opening between the right chambers is guarded by a tricuspid valve, and the one between the left chambers is guarded by a bicuspid valve. Quite a difference, you ask. In looking at the heart, you can see that the right atrium is much smaller to the right ventricle as opposed to the left atrium to the left ventricle. Think about it. If you push a smaller amount of fluid into a larger area, you have less pressure than if you push a large amount of fluid into a smaller area. A tricuspid valve allows for a more circular opening, readily allowing the movement of blood which is at a lower pressure on the right side. Conversely, a bicuspid valve is a better at tackling the high pressure on the left side, being able to spring back in place, avoiding any backflow. The openings of the right and left ventricles into the pulmonary artery and aorta respectively are provided with semilunar valves. These valves get their name from the crescent moon shape of the flaps that make up the valve. The specialized cardiac musculature called the nodal tissue is also distributed in the heart. 
The patch present in the right upper corner of the right atrium is called sinoatrial node, SAN. And the one in the lower left corner of the right atrium is called atrioventricular node, AVN. The SAN is responsible for the rhythmic contractile activity of the heart. So, how does the heart function? The cardiac cycle includes a description of the systolic contraction, diastolic relaxation activities of the atria and ventricles, the blood volume and pressure changes within the heart, and the action of the heart valves within one complete heartbeat. The deoxygenated blood pumped by the right ventricle enters the pulmonary artery and is passed onto the lungs from where it gets oxygenated. And then the oxygenated blood is carried by the pulmonary veins into the left atrium. This pathway constitutes the pulmonary circulation. The left atrium relaxes while collecting this blood. To allow the flow of blood to the next chamber, i.e. the left ventricle, the left atrium contracts. When the muscular left ventricle contracts in its turn, pressure increases and the semilunar valves guarding the aorta are forced open and blood is pumped into the body. The oxygenated blood from the whole body comes to the right atrium through the superior and inferior vena cava. As the right atrium contracts, the corresponding lower chamber, the right ventricle, dilates. This transfers blood to the right ventricle, which then pumps it to the lungs for oxygenation. Oxygenated blood from the lungs is brought back to the left atrium by the pulmonary vein. And the process goes on all throughout the life of a human being, but in a matter of about 0.8 seconds. From the heart, blood flows strictly through blood vessels, so the arteries and veins. Arteries have thick elastic walls to contain the blood pumped by the heart at high pressure, whereas veins have valves and a small lumen instead to ensure unidirectional flow of blood since the blood pressure is low in veins. On reaching an organ or tissue, the artery differentiates into smaller and smaller vessels to establish contact with all individual cells. The smallest vessels are one cell thick and are called capillaries, across which exchange of material between the blood and surrounding cells take place. Capillaries subsequently join together to form veins that collect wastes and other harmful substances for elimination. The vena cava is the largest vein in the body, which empties into the right atrium from where blood is taken to the lungs for oxygenation. Maybe we go an extra mile to conclude this video. The hepatic portal system, a system of veins that transport blood from the digestive tract to the liver. The hepatic portal vein carries nutrients and toxins absorbed from the digested food to the liver, where it is processed and filtered. And with this, I hope you all have got an idea of the cardiovascular system in your bodies, the complexity and sensitivity of each vessel and muscle in the process.